Hello, my dear friends. Today I'm going to talk about Mother Russia compared to Father Singapore. I've been living in Singapore for three years and living in Russia altogether for around 25 years. And no, I'm not 28. Anyway, I think Russians and Singaporeans have a lot in common, but the differences are also huge. At the end of this video, I'll tell you the weirdest thing about Russians from a Singaporean standpoint. Important disclaimer, I'm gonna compare Singapore with mostly Moscow, as Russia is massive itself and it's changing quite a bit north to south and east to west, and I guess it would be fair to compare big city to another big city, right? Okay, food. Of course I'm biased here, but I miss some Russian food, like borscht, um, no, it's, it's Ukrainian, then manti, no, this one is from Kazakhstan. Salo? Oh crap, Ukraine again. Alright, alright. Sirniki! Yes, this one is genuinely Russian. But anyway, all the food that I mentioned is within traditional Russian cuisine. This food is actually available in Singapore. There are a few Russian suppliers for ingredients and there is even one Russian restaurant in Singapore. But guys, it's not shashlik in Far East shopping center, like, as many Singaporeans think. This one is pretending to be Russian, serving a shot of vodka with every meal. Vodka. The authentic Russian restaurant is dumplings.ru in Maxwell Chambers. The service is, I would call it um, special, <laughs> but the food is like 80% like it would taste in Russia. Okay, stop talking about Russian food. Sorry, I'm just hungry. What's very common about the two countries is the variety of food choices. There is cheap food in Singapore in hawker centers. Same in Russia. There are food courts and street food like shawarma. And of course, there are plenty of fine dining places in both cities. That's crazy how both Singapore and Moscow are into it. In the list of the world's 50 best restaurants worldwide, there are two Moscow and one Singapore place in top 20. And the winner Mirazur from France just had a pop-up in Singapore in Mandala Club for a few months. We've been there and the experience was incredible. Last one here. The difference that I noticed is that in Moscow, comfortable sitting is more common than in Singapore. There are plenty of places with cozy home style sofas, armchairs and many sites are like lounge type where you can relax and spend a lot of time with your friends. Many popular places offer shisha which unfortunately was banned in Singapore in 2016. But even without shisha you can still relax by watching videos on this channel. To do this in the future just subscribe to this channel and activate a notification bell. You see? It's effortless. Number two is weather. Do you think it's obvious? Singapore is super warm, Russia super cold. But no, there is no such thing as the weather in Russia, because Russia is huge. So it's very different, depends on the region. Also, many places are cold in winter and hot in summer, which is obviously not the case in Singapore. In Volgograd, where I spent nine years of my life, the climate is very continental, with up to 40 degrees Celsius in summer and down to minus 30 degrees in winter. It's brutal. Moscow climate is kind of similar to Volgograd, but with more mild summer. The funny thing is that people from Singapore often think that, as I'm Russian, I don't feel cold because I'm so used to it. Wrong. That's actually the opposite, because I used to be freezing cold half of my life, I hate it. So the Singapore weather with the 30 degrees Celsius and high humidity is just perfect for me. I guess the humid lover part of me comes from my childhood spent in Vladivostok, the city close to Japan in the very east of Russia, where the humidity level is also very high throughout the year. By the way, what's the coldest temperature you've experienced in your life? And where was it? Let me know in the comment section below. Okay, the next one is from my professional interest. It's about how people behave online, especially in social media. Let's talk about Instagram. What influencers post on Instagram in Singapore? Oh, I just had lunch. Oh, I'm so cool with my new bag. Oh, staycation finally, yay! So basically, Instagram is where you follow your favorite celebrities, fabulous 
lifestyle or how your colleague goes to Santosa with kids. In Russia, Instagram has become a national place for every type of content. Educational, entertaining, inspirational, it's all there. And the crazy thing about it is that Russians write long reads. Bloggers actually write long posts on Instagram and their followers read them. Magic! YouTube in Russia is also different from YouTube in Singapore. Here in Singapore is just one of the channels to deliver video content to consumers, together with TV, Netflix and others. In Russia, it's the most prominent channel. Two reasons behind this. Uh, one is that TV content is perceived to be flooded with propaganda, while YouTube has all sorts of opinions. The second one is the majority of Russians don't really want to pay for content. Netflix is struggling there. Attitude towards money in Russia and Singapore. This one is quite different for the two nations. Before I go there, let me introduce you to the sponsor of this video that knows exactly how to make more money for you. The HODL Not Crypto Interest Platform is the Singapore-based fintech that allows customers to deposit their cryptocurrencies, earn interest rates and swap tokens. They support six cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin and Ethereum. How it works? They give crypto loans to companies and share profit with individuals investors. Hodlnot was established in Singapore by 2Bitcoin maximalists in 2019. Currently, they have more than 5,000 active users and $300 million in held assets. The cool thing about Hodlnot is that you will receive weekly payouts every Monday at 5 p.m. What are other features? High interest rates up to 13.73 compound interest from your crypto assets. There are no lock-in period or minimal deposits. iOS users can download the app from the app store so start to make interest from your crypto assets using the link in the description below back to the money attitudes of singaporeans compared to russians singaporeans are all about money making money saving money investing money it's all about it even chinese new year wishes are mainly about money of course for the majority of russians money is a big thing in their life as well but for many it's not the central topic a sizable part of the population thinks money is evil. Big money is all corrupt. Or if not corrupt, then you can only make it by cheating on others. And some people just don't consider money as an important thing in life. They are more into culture, history, art, just disregarding money. I guess among other reasons explaining it, the big one is the background of two countries, communists versus capitalists. Okay, and the weirdest difference for me between Russia and Singapore is how people talk. I don't mean they speak different languages, obviously. All Singaporeans are fast talkers. I was trying to remember who out of my Singaporean friends talk slowly. No one. It started out because I tried to do it. Because it's very easy. Everything is already in your fridge. Butter sugar toast because I like the combination. Tell the truth, right? This is not the best time. I, I had it because... While in Russia, many people naturally speak lazily, choose words and make pause. There is no way that Russian propaganda can really influence the American voter. I'm sure you'll be surprised when you come to Russia next time. See ya!